What's up everybody? Where's the camera? Oh, there it is. My god. I'm not used to making YouTube videos anymore. I used to make them like every fucking day, but I've been not a YouTube person recently, so I'm very rusty. I'm sorry. I apologize, but for some reason today I had this inkling to fucking make a YouTube video. I just didn't know what to make the YouTube video about, but then I remembered, hey, I bought a couple of used books the other day, so why not make a book haul YouTube video? Because I think that's a thing. I know people like to go shopping and do like my haul videos or whatever, so why not join the fun? I guess you could say. Oh my God, I'm kind of boring. It is very fucking hot in here. Please excuse my ratchetness. It's actually not even because of the heat, it's just the depression, but don't worry about that. Just really just want to make this video, so I'm just gonna start. I'm just going to go, but first I'd like to just address the elephant in the room, if I may. You see my bookshelf? Ugh, let me move my fat ass. You see my bookshelf? You see all of this sin that's happening over here? This is what happens when you buy a Walmart bookshelf, meaning a bookshelf from Walmart bought it about a year ago it was standing upright it had about about three or four shelves or so and it was Gucci everything was fine it was cool and then you know we decided to move it and it started tilting which you know is completely 100% safe especially since I have cats that like to roam around the house and occasionally jump on that bitch so rather than spending every single waking moment of my life worrying that you know they were going to get crushed they had to put it on its side until my broke ass can afford to buy a legitimate, heavily wooded and heavily um, guarded, nailed to the wall, whatever fucking bookshelf. So I consider this art though, in the meantime. It's the only thing that's keeping me sane. I know the books are unhappy, but you know what? I'm also unhappy. It's cool. We're all unhappy. It's 2018. So let me just start by saying I went to this place in Yarmouth, Massachusetts. And if you're from Massachusetts, you say Yarmouth. It's spelled like Yarmouth. But if you're from Massachusetts and you say Yarmouth and not Yarmouth, we will know. Us mass holes will know and we will fuck you up. Went to Yarmouth. Oh my God, I just did it. We went to Yarmouth, Massachusetts to check out this bookshop. My manager and I, I meant to say, my man, did I say that already? I don't know, I have like no brain cells. My manager and I went to Yarmouth to go check out this place called Parnassus. And how we found out about it, well, how I found out about it was my boyfriend took me there one time after he saw it on one of those like local places in Massachusetts you need to know about documentaries like that come on at like eight o'clock at night on local channels and let me just tell you about this place. It's a book lover's wet dream. I literally, when we were going to it the first time, it was like, oh my fucking God, this is a bookshop. It was cool looking. Uh, it looked rustic. When you walk in, all you smell is old books. And let me tell you, like, I, it brought a tear to my eye. I was like, holy fuck, like, can I bottle this fragrance and like bathe in it daily? Like, damn, bruh. When you actually, it's cool, when, when you pull in, you, if you pull into the right of the building, they actually have like, a, I don't, I don't want to say it's a kiosk, but it's like an outdoor thing um, that has a bunch of books out there first. So when you first pull it in park, you get out and you can check out these books that are literally on the side of the building underneath a blue like light thing like it makes it like a weird iridescent light that I can't really describe unless like you're there I wish I had pictures I throw some pictures of this bitch and those books out there are like about like 25 cents 50 cents maybe a dollar dollar fifty maybe the most because they're very like the ones that have been like handed the most whereas inside while the books are still like very used and somewhat beat up and at one time loved by another person they're in way better condition, which is why they're inside versus outside. So on this particular day, uh, when we went, I happened to have found four really awesome books. And the total of that came to, I think about $17, probably. The way I put it was, I bought four used books for the price of maybe half of one book from Barnes and Noble. And I'm not shitting on Barnes and Noble, I fucking sweat Barnes and Noble. 
but there's just something about, you know, being able to walk out of a bookshop with more than one book and not having to spend, like, you know, your whole fucking mortgage on just a shopping cart's worth of books, you know what I mean? Ugh, God. And without further ado, I'm just gonna fucking start this bitch up. Here we go, first book. This is actually a book that I found in the outside, on the outside kiosk that was 50 cents. Shirley Jackson's The Haunting of Hill House. And now, see, the only reason why I bought this because I actually already have this book. I have this edition. This is The Lottery and Other Stories, and it also includes The Haunting of Hill House and her other novel, We Have Always Lived in the Castle. It's one of those, like, what would you call this? Um, there's a word of these type of books. Like, I don't want to say compendium, compendium, condominium, however you say it. But I've actually bought this one at a local bookstore in uh, New Bedford, Massachusetts. This was like $20. And the only reason, I've never bought more than one copy of a book, but I don't really consider this a copy of The Haunting because even though like The Haunting is literally right here, it's its own book as, you know, it's its own, its own person, I guess you could say, so. I've always wanted to have just a straight up copy of The Haunting. I, for some reason, whenever I've tried to read The Haunting, I've never gotten further than like the fourth chapter, which is very disheartening because I'm actually a big fan of the first movie from the 1960s. I just really wanted this book too because look at the cover. See the gold? See how it shines in the light? See how it shines through the darkness? shines through my ever-loving motherfucking soul look at this bitch you know i just lived for it when i started i was like <gasps> like i immediately gasped i was like this is fucking amazing and i do plan on reading this bitch at some point i was going to read the one that was in this one but i ended up just reading the short stories which by the way are awesome if you have a chance to look uh to take a look at shirley jackson's works She's fucking awesome. She's one of those people that writes like, like she uses the psyche of mainly women, women's psyches, in such a way that it almost seems like she's not even using their psyches at all. Like it's hard to explain. I'm not trying to be pretentious at all. And I'm not trying to bask in the glory of this New England writer at all. Even though I do have a special place in my heart for New England writers because I live in New England, I am a writer, and I'm going to be a fucking New England writer, published author someday. I will be. I fucking will be. Promise. I'm human. Fuck you. Moving on, my second find was actually a little book of poetry by Adrian Rich. This one's called Leaflets, poems between 1965 and 1968. Now, I had heard of Adrienne Rich before, but I didn't realize I had heard of her. Because right after I bought this, I went on Wikipedia and I had seen I had already read the article. And I was like, oh, okay, work. She did half the work for me subconsciously. I had no idea. Um, I didn't know that she was a lesbian poet either. And if you know me, I, you know, favor gay writers mostly over straight writers just because I'm biased because I'm queer as fuck. But the one thing that actually, this one was three, was this one 350 really? Yeah, this one was 350 Usually their poetry over at that little bookshop is kind of expensive, but it's worth it. Um, the only reason why I bought this was because I opened up to a poem. Where is it? Can I find it really quick? I don't know if I can find it. I should really like start bookmarking shit, but LOL. Bitch, no. I don't know. I opened up to a poem and it said something about chain smoking and I'm a fucking chain smoker, which you can hear in my voice because I'm very like, <sighs> and I was like, oh bitch, I'm buying this. But the night I got this, I was sitting on my couch reading it and I read, the, I was reading them in order. There was this one poem that stood out to me called Holding Out. If you can look it up online somewhere. It's just a three stanza poem, but the last stanza for some reason I liked so much I might use it in the preface of the novel I'm working on. I'm gonna just read it really quick. Adrian Rich wrote, Late afternoons the ice squeaks underfoot like mica, and when the sun drops red and moon-faced back of the gun-colored furs, the best intentions are none too good. Then we have to make a go of it in the smoke with the dark outside and our love and our boots at first, no matter. For some reason, I was like, damn, 
bitch. That sums up kind of the book that I'm writing a little bit. And I was like, whoa, like I had, like it was meant to be. I had to find this. I actually tried finding the poem online and it was kind of difficult for me. I'm sure it's there somewhere, but I got lazy, but I wouldn't have found that poem, this poem, unless I had found this fucking book by this fucking bitch. And I was like, so happy that I did. It's pretty damn good. I'm somebody who's used to reading like Sylvia Plath and Anne Sexton and stuff. So to have found somebody else, you know, that wrote po that uh, another fucking book of poetry from somebody completely different, I was like, hell yes, I'm into this. I haven't read the whole thing yet. I actually have this thing where I buy books more than I read them. Like, look at all the books I have. I probably only read maybe 10 of them, which is very bad. I'm a very shitty person and I apologize for my shittiness because I do wish that I read more. It's just, you know, either time escapes me or I want to work on my writing more or I'm just not at all interested. And I know a part of writing comes from reading and I totally get that and I do read, it's just you know, from the point when I read something to the point of when I want to write something is so far and few in between and I can't stand that shit. Like, I really should discipline myself and say, all right, you're gonna have a fucking hour to read and you're gonna have an hour to write, you're gonna alternate, you're gonna just have a day we read and just have a day when you write. I should do that, but I don't. So, you know, forgive me. I'm a hack. At least I own up to it though. At least I'm not, you know, fake crying over it or anything. All right, bitches, the next book. Oh, shit. What is this? Oh, this is just... Fuck about that. This is something I had no idea about. This was one of the... Did I find this in the outside kiosk? I think I did. Yeah, I did. Definitely did, because this was a dollar. Um, This book is a memoir, actually. Shattered Dreams. My life as a polygamist's wife. And I was like, ooh, polygamy. I immediately thought of like the stuff I had seen on CNN about it a couple years back when like that horrible shit with Warren Jeffs was going on. And I was like, oh damn, like what the fuck is this about? I read the back and it's just about, it's a true story about this woman who joined a fucking polygamist family or something like that um i don't know too too much about it i think somewhere in here i saw the word cult and i'm actually all about cult shit very fascinated by the idea of people losing themselves to the point of joining a cult or like the charlie manson stuff or um the heaven's gate stuff like all that crazy 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 bullshit that happens in the world like it fascinates me and also there's pictures which is cool you know it's not a plus or anything like that but it's just cool you know um didn't i see the word cult in this bitch somewhere i must have where oh was it here oh right here somebody wrote shadow dreams is a masterpiece what courage to carve out a life in a polygamist cult for 28 years see i saw the word cult and i said oh bitch a dollar there you go i read like the first chapter and it was cool but i can tell this isn't one that i'm going to like go to automatically when i want to read something i'm not gonna go and be like fuck yeah i'm gonna fucking uh, you know um maybe i will someday you never know oh bitch the back of it says an excerpt from cult insanity i don't know what the fuck that is oh shit damn okay but yeah, it, it it was an overall attractive book. I love the color of it. I liked the old portrait face of this chick and everything. So, you know, I went for it and I got it. I'm glad I did. Um, but, you know, this was probably one of those impulse buys where if I saw it somewhere else, like if it had been like $2 or $3, I probably would have been like, nah, chill, I would have put it back. But hey, it's just another addition to my collection, so work. My last one that I'm going to show you was a find. The literal definition of find. Imagine eBay being a store that you could literally walk into and you see all of these books that people have placed bids on that you can literally just fucking grab for yourself. And this one was also the most expensive because it is a first edition and there's actually a little bit of a backstory behind this book for me and I'll explain that in a minute, but get ready, bitch, because I found a first edition of fucking Deliverance. Girl, you serious? For $10. This bitch was literally $10. It's, they're all written, they price it as they write it in 
from the corners of the pages and me being a wicked book snob I don't believe in writing in books but if it's for that totally fine it's not like it's underlined or anything like that but I've been wanting to read this bitch for so long so to see it on the shelf in that store was like mind-blowing like I randomly was like what's the name of that guy who wrote that book Dicky. oh cool so I went and I, I was searching in the fucking shop and the shelves and I saw it and I, I've seen what the first edition looks like like online like through Wikipedia or whatever and I was like oh my god they literally have it oh my god like I freaked out I was like we're done this is all I'm getting today I'm getting this and these other books and we're out because I was like damn and that's what's great about that little bookstore too is you don't know what you're gonna find you're gonna find some shit that'll blow your fucking mind I could see this book being sold online easily for like a hundred two hundred dollars just for like them crazy booksellers who have like money literally coming out of their urethra and the fact that I got it for ten dollars mind-blowing and now the backstory there's a little bit of a backstory with me and my life about this. So I go to this other bookshop. Uh, I go to this one on the Cape. It's not a used bookshop. It's just a really cute little one. About the same price range as if you're going to Barnes & Noble, which is cool, whatever. You gotta make your money somehow. It's fine. I went in there a couple months ago and I saw that they had a copy of Deliverance, but it was a new edition and it was so fucking ugly the it was paperback which that doesn't really honestly like doesn't matter to me I'd rather have hardcover but paperback isn't gonna fucking end my world or anything they had it, it I can't even describe to you what it looked like like image wise but it reminded me of like an assigned reading book at school if you know what I mean it was just so unattractive and I knew that if I bought it I'd be making a mistake somehow whatever so the reason why that this mattered to me was because when I went there I asked the lady that works there not the usual lady because the usual lady who works there the owner of the place knows me and like loves me um, this other lady who I'd never seen before I asked her I was like do you have deliverance by any chance and she looked and she said no it's actually out of print the only that one that you have is like the only one that's in print or something like that and I was like oh okay whatever it was so I had in my hands that book and other voices other rooms I believe is what it's called. You think I would know because I literally I ended up buying that book that day. It's in my living room um, by Truman Capote. It was between those two books and she came back and was like, you finding everything okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm just, you know, looking through these. Like, okay, it's fine. So I obviously ended up putting back Deliverance and I went up to the counter. I was like, all right, I'm done. And I told my boyfriend to, you know, we're, we're set. I'm just going to go and buy this, whatever. So I go to the cash out and she's like, did you find this okay? I was like, yep. And she just said in a very Cape Cod, waspy, underhanded manner, and I trust that you put the book back where it belongs. And I was like, I didn't think anything of it because I'm not from the Cape. I'm not used to waspy people. So I was like, yeah, I did. You know what I mean? Later on, my boyfriend and I were talking about it, and he was like, that was really shitty of her. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, she basically asked if, like, you were being, like, a fucking savage, and did you just leave the book anywhere? And I was like, she did? Oh, yeah, she kind of did, didn't she? Fuck that bitch. <laughs> it's one of those uh, situations where I wish I could go back in time and be like, no, I fucking threw it over the aisle, and wherever it landed is where it landed, you whore. Fuck you. Because I'm that type of bitch to do that shit. <laughs> so... You can understand my happiness when I found this. Because if I had found this, and after buying that other ugly copy of Deliverance, I would have been rip shit, girl. I don't know if you can, like, return shit. That's the thing. Or exchange. If I can exchange, it would have been one thing. Oh, fuck it. We'll just go back. But not if that bitch is there. Let me just say that. But, yeah, anyway. um, This is my book haul, girl. This pretty ass copy of the haunting of hell house this really cute and informative i guess you could say or life-changing book of poetry by adrian rich this memoir that i'm gonna read probably one day in 40 years a true story about a polygamist cult and a first edition a cheap first edition decent condition first edition copy of a literary classic so there you go. This has been my 
book haul YouTube video, and I appreciate you all watching it. And maybe someday I'll make another video about another haul I do. If not, whatever. You will see me again. I will be a published author one of these goddamn days. I will be a published author. Keyword there is will. And I'm gonna fucking do videos about that as well. And hopefully someday, other people will make videos about me. Maybe, that'd be cool. That's the dream, isn't it? To be a published author, get that book deal, get that coin, and get the life that I so rightly deserve. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> all right, thank you guys for watching. Peace, love, and blessings, and all that bullshit. Bye.